there's been a lot of uh, uh, development around uh, AI tools, AI systems. F to an average person, what is AI? When we talk about AI, <coughs> artificial intelligence, uh, we're basically looking at building systems or machines that can think like human. Um, in academics, we say somebody is very brilliant, somebody is very intelligent, meaning they have some abilities, they have some skills that help them to be able to do something that excites us, right? And that way we say they are intelligent. Now we're trying to put the same level of intelligence into into machines or build that into machines. And that's what is done by artificial intelligence. Now the goal of AI is to be able to build systems that could be able to make some form of decision on their own so that it doesn't always require human being to be around before that decision could be taken. Assuming you, you are, you're running a bank, you want to be able to detect um, fraudulent activities or transaction that raises concern. Um, if you have like thousands of records, you need a human being to go through them one, 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 thousand of records. And that means you need more human being to be able to validate all that. Now, if you have one AI system, they could be able to scan through all those records, probably in a few minutes. But with AI systems, you'll be able to scan all the thousand pages within minutes and be able to identify all the people within that space. There are a lot of people who are concerned about uh, this uh, technology. People think that uh, uh, it's something that uh, could be used for good, uh, but there are a lot of people who think that uh, it could be uh, used uh, by bad actors to do really bad things. How do we prepare ourselves for these emerging technologies? Um, there's so much happening in the world today in the area of emerging technologies and AI to be specific. All these technologies, the investment, the research that has gone into it, the sole purpose is to help solve problems because it can accelerate the rate at which we solve problems, create new opportunities for as many people as possible. However, um, there are challenges with uh, privacy, security, ethical concerns as well. So we can take the like of um, information dissemination, right? Uh, you can use AI to write good stories, good articles, good context, good that could really help create rich content for your audience. The same tool can be used by someone to also create misinformation that leads to chaoses among others. <coughs> Right. The same tools that can be used for creating video content that could excite your customers, engage them, could also be used to create deepfake. That could be used to manipulate people to get them to doing things that are not ethical, right? Right. So these are some of the concerns that um, we have when it comes to AI uh, being used for good and the same time can be used for um, other bad activities as well. So there, there are all these challenges that we're still trying to figure out how to build safe AI systems, how to ensure that AI do not take over the world, and still ensuring that all the AI tools and systems we are building, it, it's built to serve humanity, not to destroy humanity. How about uh, for people who are uh, in different uh, fields, uh, there, there is also concern that, uh, you know, uh, this AI is going to take away their jobs. Uh, this uh, AI could change the way business is done. How, yeah. what, how do you alleviate their fears? We see a new revolution coming. Where now, most of the jobs are going to be automated. Even the office works, most of them are going to be automated by emerging technologies. And this is also going to change how we see work. What it might mean is that you might not necessarily have to wake up and go to office to work. It means you can wake up, be in your VR, and you'll be in your virtual office and work. So all this transformation that is happening, um, I think those who are able to adapt to this new way of life and work will still stay relevant, but those who might not want to move from the traditional office work um, 8 to 5 might still find it difficult to be able to get jobs because they might not be 8 to 5 kind of work again. I think we all have to start figuring our career and what is going to happen to our career and profession in the next 10, 20 years to come and start adapting. That way we'll stay relevant. But if we fail to, then we might end up being displaced by all these technologies. I've learned so much from you. Thank you so much for your time. So thank you too.